And welcome back to the latest anime news for the week ending February 13th, 2021. Um, so, these, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, the streaming service Funimation is officially under a class action lawsuit that their website violates the Americans with Disabilities Act. Genesa Angelis, or Angelis, a legally blind person, filed the lawsuit claiming that Funimation has failed, quote, to design, construct, maintain, and operate its website to be fully accessible and, um, excuse me, fully accessible, ah, sorry, my computer decided to bounce everything all over the place. Um, to be fully accessible and independently usable by Angelis and other blind or visually impaired people, end quote. Uh, the suit specifically refers to Funimation's shop website. The lawsuit states that, that Angelis, who used a screen reading software and uses that to navigate online, tried multiple times to make a purchase from the website but was denied a shopping experience, quote, similar to that of a sighted individual due to the website's lack of a variety of features and accommodations, which effectively barred her from being able to determine what specific products were offered for sale, end quote. Specifically, many features on the site lacked alt text, label elements, or individual titles, and there were many broken links, which I think we can all attest to. Mm. The lawsuit requests of Funimation retain a qualified consultant to assist them in complying with the <clears throat> accessibility guidelines and request an injunction to prohibit Funimation from violating the ADA, an injunction for Funimation to make its website in full compliance with the ADA, a declaration from Funimation that it operates its site, quote, in a manner that discriminates against the blind and which fails to provide access for persons with disabilities as acquired with the ADA, end quote, as well as compensation for damages and attorney and expert fees. And then reached out to Funimation for a statement, but they declined to comment. And I must say, this is something that I've long wondered wow. and thought about when it comes to, whoa, sorry, when it comes to uh, <coughs> these things is, you know, um, ADA is the law, like, American yep. Disability yeah. Act is something you've got to comply with, and a lot of these websites just patently don't. And yeah, that that's, <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's very true, that's, um, you know, that's something I had to deal with, with, in, in, you know, theater and stuff like that, making our, our shows ADA compliant, and yes, you know, the blind do watch, I know it's kind of a weird thing to say, the blind do watch a place um right. you know they they listen to it there's kind con- of there's context there for them there's ways to to do it and <clears throat> there's very interesting ways to do it actually uh we do that it, you know we did it for deaf people blind people of course you know there's you know handicaps even blah 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 as far as websites go um that's another thing that that happens with the with the ada and the ada is 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 kind of interesting in that it, the word discrimination is being used, but it's not really discrimination. What it is is it's it's a lack of of being of being accessible as opposed to you know we don't care that you're blind and, and you're and you're right. going to our site. It's a lack it's, of accommodation. It, uh, they it, right, and that's exactly what it is. Is is a, what what this person is suing for is to have the accommodation to to have these things. Because when you stop and think about it, we we talk about. In, in our in our anime discussions we did tonight about Japanese versus English subs mm-hmm. and and or you know dubs and um, you know that that is important to listening people have a preference to that yeah. and you know for a blind person you know that's doubly important I mean there's there's other contextual clues that they'll be able to get through um the the things that they use on online i don't know if you guys have ever actually seen one of these or used them what it is is that if if you if you're completely blind you use your hands it looks like a laptop so you have the screen in front but what your fingers go over there's a, there's like a a track about where your f key buttons would be and the little braille comes up mm-hmm. in there so you just place your fingers there and you kind of move with the braille on there and it just it pops up and then you know you use the the keep it the, the the pad to scroll scroll down and, and things like that it gives you information hmm. so there's a translation to that so if if they're not doing that if, they're, if the website is not connecting to that particular machine mm-hmm. which it should and it's not a hard thing to, and that's the other part of it is that this is not actually something where it would cost fundamentation millions of dollars to switch over to to do that mm-hmm. it, it, it's a very simple 
it's a very simple thing that they can buy very cheaply. And I'm kind of surprised in this day and age that they hadn't already. Well, you know I mean, it's people, not something it's, I often it's, it's think honest, of. But, it's it's I mean? honestly because people, well, that's just it. People don't think about it. And yeah. so, like, when I go into a theater that doesn't have, that isn't ADA compliant, I always have to explain why they have to do it. It's not that they're against people. They want the people to come in, as a matter of fact. It's beneficial. But they just don't understand that this is a thing, right? You know, this yeah. is this is something you have to do. So there's some there's so there's people at Fan Animation who are just probably just going, "Oh crap, we could have been doing this this whole time," mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And they're and they're I'm willing to bet there's probably an account going there. Yeah, we look how much money we're losing just mm-hmm. by not tapping into this audience by spending right. five thousand dollars or however much it is well, to and about- put it up. And on the website front, you don't even need the the, the, the braille equipment. Um, the screen readers have gotten so good now with, yeah. with um, uh, announcing audio that basically you're you're going into the code and saying, okay, for any given visual element, here is the textual equivalent of that. Okay. That the screen reader right. will then see that and say, oh, in, you know, we'll just read out that text instead of reading out the image, if you will. Right. Um, and so it just kind of goes through all the text in there, and then it, when it hits an image, it reads that out instead. And so it's one of those things where, again, like as Steve says, as a developer, if you don't think to put that in there, it's just not there, and the screen reader can't deal with it. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, and on the web being the web, you can build your website any way you want. <laughs> you know, there, there's right. no police sitting, you know, over your the, the developer's desk checking them. Um, so yeah, I'm sh- I'm sure it's it's not quite oversight. It's it's something where nobody. Nobody put in the time and thought to say, "Are we doing this or not?" And right. it's really on the de- the web developer side to be able to say, "Hey, this is something we should do to comply with the law." <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know. Because- well, how if you're, if you know, it's the internet. The internet. You can go to a site in Bangalore, India. You yeah. can go to a site in you know Congo. I mean. You're not going to have some sites that'll that'll function, but you know, Funimation's in conjunction with yeah. Sony, yeah. but they're still here. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like so you can't say it's oh, it's just an offshore. It's something yeah. that they don't right. deal with. Right. Right. This yeah. is an onshore issue that mm-hmm. uh, that's that's why mm-hmm. I'm like I'm kind of surprised that yeah. wasn't mm-hmm. already a part of the plan there. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, um, it also sounds like it, we've all used a Funimation site. And we all know how unique it is. Um, mm. You know, it also feels like one of those things where it just, you know, we want something that's flashy and cool and awesome and amazing and flashy and interesting, um, and we're just not thinking about anything else. We're not thinking about any other concerns for anything else. Mm. Um, it's a, a common thing with web. You see it a lot also, in, in fairness, in lots of other websites, you know, made for small businesses where they just don't think about it and it doesn't, doesn't go in there. Well, now uh, that, but, that Funimation and for, has acquired, Sony has acquired Crunchyroll, mm-hmm. It begs the question: Is like, okay, if Funimation was was, mm. you know, crappy in their website, is Crunchyroll compliant? Good question. Well, yeah. here's here's the answer: probably not. Mm. Uh, what happened when actually in DC with not DC Rockville uh, Roundhouse Theater? I think it was. Mm. I could be wrong on that, um, but anyway, one of the local theaters. Um, they their oversight was not to have a performance that was for deaf people so there's a way that you do that <clears throat> there's a, you block off seats and you put a, a interpreter there and you have to bring in the interpreter to, with a, with or a group of interpreters to you know go over the script to make sure that they know the script they have to watch a rehearsal there's a big process that goes on right. and then on the day that these the, the, the deaf people who rely on sign, come in on that day buying tickets specifically for that day <clears throat> well not all theaters do that think to do that so what happened was is that there was a what there was a lawsuit and it steamrolled and basically it's just one of those things where it's just like you know of course they won the you know the the deaf patrons won and so now all the theaters in DC and outside of that going it's radiating outside to, to, to the country before COVID um, that you know you if you don't want to get sued this is what you have to do mm-hmm. so if Fundamental Animation is getting sued for this you can bet 
that crunchy roll that that Sony and that all these other guys are probably going. Uh, okay, website guy. Mm-hmm. Or what, what's going on here? Are we compliant? Are we compliant? IT department. Let's go. Well, so, yeah, and there's, so I'm yeah. willing to bet that in the next couple months, I, this lawsuit yeah. will begin and end here. Yeah. Yeah. Fun animation. Everyone's going. To, everyone's going to take their cue and just be safe. Because, like I said, this is not an expensive fix. This no. is just something that goes on the website and it's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm sure this is also one of those things where, um, and again, because we know Funimation, it, it sounds like this isn't just I forgot a tag somewhere. You know, this is kind of endemic throughout the site, as opposed right. to just. Oh, a little thing here and there. So this is one of the, yeah. I, which I think is why, maybe why they went out to Funimation because it's egregious, right? Right. Yeah. Um, uh, I actually just did a check on Crunchyroll.com, and I couldn't get the service to actually connect to Crunchyroll.com because Crunchyroll is apparently doing some very interesting things with like caching stuff. So who knows? Hmm. Um, but anyway, yeah. We'll, we'll more news as it develops. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Um, Wit Studio and Netflix announced this week that the two have partnered up to teach some of the next generation of animators. Wit Studio is establishing the Wit Animator Academy this April, and Netflix is, Netflix is covering tuition costs and living expenses for 10 lucky students. Uh, training at the new academy will be provided by animation school Sasa Yuri. Heading the academy will be lecturer Hitomi Tatano, who was an animation checker on Akira, and most of Studio Ghibli's productions from the 90s and 2000s. The current staff at WIT, who've worked on Attack on Titan, Great Pretender, and other notable animations, will also help teach the students. The program will take place from April to September of 2021, and is open to young adults up to 25 years old, who have at least completed high school. Um, And good news to all the aspiring international animators, nationality does not matter as long as the applicant can speak daily conversational Japanese. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, so, so I've been kicked down on several, <laughs> several. <laughs> yeah, they're so not going to just there. cover that. Um, Netflix is covering the six hundred thousand yen tuition fees, about fifty seven hundred U S dollars, as well as providing one hundred fifty thousand yen or about fourteen hundred U S dollars to ten people who pass both with initial screening and an interview with a Netflix producer. Ha ha ha. Those who successfully complete the program will be contacted, contracted for a year with Wit and Production IG to work on original anime for Netflix. So it is all moving over and folding into the whole Netflix um, idea. So basically, we're going to have a new crop of people, small crop of people, pay, being, pay, being paid seven twenty five an hour to make anime. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. At least it's production IG, and production IG apparently pays. I think pays fairly well. Oh, okay. Fourteen fifty. Fourteen fifty. As opposed, to, and and as soon as you write off the uh, requirements of, uh, you know, like conversational Japanese, okay, and I'm out. Twenty five up to twenty five years of age. I'm like. Mm-mm. I can fake it on all fronts. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely, yeah. Konnichiwa. Just, just write it down my arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ohio goes thy mas. Yeah. Hey, Boku no, my wa like, no, my like. san. Hajime <laughs> mashita. She, 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 ha. <laughs> no, in my luck, I would be. Donde esta la Biblia? <laughs> Damn, Damn it. Damn, I got it wrong again. Damn it. Wrong test. It's the Spanish arm, not the Japanese mm-hmm. arm. <laughs> Um, he seems confused. No, he's multilingual. Yeah, we like we Spanish. Yeah. Let's get tacos. Uh, You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, Your animation. Anna who? <laughs> <laughs> the, meanwhile, the 2021 Tokyo Anime Awards Festival was held this week where excellence in animation achievements are acknowledged and awarded, according to them. The event gives individual awards for staff members across the industry, as well as fan awards and, of course, the prestigious Anime of the Year. Unsurprisingly, Demon Slayer and Violet Evergarden, the movie, had strong showings throughout the awards. Both the director and animator awards went to Demon Slayer, and the staff of the Violet Evergarden movie took the awards for screenplay and for art-slash-color design, which was awarded posthumously to KyoAni's Mikiko Watanabe, who passed away in the arson attack in 2019. Watanabe, Kyoto Animation's art director, won the award posthumously last year as well. The final individual award for music went to Yuki Kajiura, who also receives the award for the second year, and has done the music for a great many favorite anime. This year, they were Fate Stay Night, Heaven's Field, 
uh, Evans Feel, excuse me, and Sword Art Online Alicization War of Underworld, but Kajira has been doing anime music all the way back since at least Dot Hack Sign in 2000, uh, or 1999, I think. Of course, the main event of the awards is Anime of the Year, which is awarded to both a TV anime and an anime film. The film award, as you may have guessed based on the other awards, actually went to Violet Evergarden, not Mugen Train. Wow. Um, you might not have guessed the winner of TV Anime of the Year, though. It is well-deserved. Keep your hands off Ezokan. Um, Hell yeah. For those of you who expected either of those awards to go to Demon Slayer, both the anime series and the Mugen Train film actually weren't eligible because the winners had to have premiered between October 1st, 2019 and September 30th, 2020, and both were just outside the range. Although we can probably guess what next year's anime film of the year will be. Yeah. yeah. Still, both winners very well deserved. Um, the nominees were selected with votes from the general public, and winners then chosen by a range of anime industry professionals, which I think is a pretty interesting way of doing it. Um, so, yeah, cool to see some awards. Eyes okay. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I really expected, like, just like, and all these award uh, moving train. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that's, I'm sure that's Brad yeah. said, that's mm-hmm. the future. That's the future. Yep, 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 we, yep. yep. Although, yeah, the, although, the massive group winning is mm-hmm. Ishizoku Reviewers. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Eva 3.0 1.0 comes out like this month. Maybe. Maybe. So, <laughs> <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> That's like an echo in here. <laughs> um, so we'll see if that you know affects anything as well. Wouldn't it be funny if like um, fans like only voted for Eva? And Demon Slayer like just didn't even make it in because like, well like we we like to oh. vote for it but like nobody voted for, for Demon Slayer. <laughs> uh, no, that would be like no, an man. alternate universe kind of thing. There's no way in hell that's gonna happen. I know. I mean, it could be. Uh, you, uh, you're right. In, in the world of Reddit, you could yeah. do a game stop on it. Mm-hmm. You totally possible. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in which case, okay. then Ishizoku reviewers. Hey, you know, hey, it could be a Reddit go. thing. Could be a thing. Who knows? <laughs> no, I think if we learned from what was it, the Nebula Awards, um, they, they can just change the rules. Was it Nebula or Hugo's? Where uh, I don't know. Uh, Hugo, I think. Hugo's, they change yeah. the rule in the middle of the I, award. Um, uh, a a an online group pushed a ridiculous, trashy novel into the uh, the the the, um, the thing and essentially gave it a massive number of votes and the. Um, the folks running it said, "Okay, that just doesn't count. Like, we're, no, yeah, like, we're, wow. we're, we're, we just we, we we realized this was a trick, basically, and so we're just disqualifying it out of hand." Um, Which you know, that's interesting because um, my anime list was uh, last year or the year before. They sent a group mailing that said, "Listen, we're adjusting things mm. so that all of their rating system." They had to adjust it because that was happening, that people were going in and were like, yeah. oh, and I'll just pick on issues of reviewers yeah. just for the hell of it. Um, people were going in and just dogpiling on it and being like, oh, yeah, yeah, give it like a 10. And then they were flooding it with that. So it, yeah. a lot of these series that were fine, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. arguably <laughs> fine, mm-hmm. were suddenly and incredibly massively popular yeah. when it's like no they weren't they yeah. they were actually sort of jazzed up by like people trying this little underground trick and mm-hmm. so they reset it and adjusted all the the uh, reviews again I'm yep. like oh, gotcha okay it happens i see yep yeah you know, gotta watch out for those tricksy people on the internet mm. darn reddit <laughs> also this week exactly um Articles that we may not talk about, but we might. So feel free to interrupt me if you hear something that interests you. We'll be going a little fast this week. Um, Koei Tecmo Games revealed yesterday that Gust's Blue Reflection Magical Girl role-playing game is inspired a TV anime ad- adaptation entitled Blue Reflection Ray, premiering in April. Um, Tokyo-based game and character design company Ando, Ando announced the original web anime AIC Ice of Unusual Power ESPN High School Detective. I have no idea. Um, which began streaming today on YouTube. Um, uh, uh, began streaming today on YouTube with new episodes coming every Saturday. Um, San X, the company known for Rila Kuma, Sumiko Garashi, and other popular character franchises, announced this week it's introducing a new series of characters that will star in their own October TV anime. Um, the new masks are called Chickip Dancers. 
and including huh? a character named called Hone Chicken or Hone Chicken. <laughs> yeah. Um, the direct, awesome. The previous director of Agretico will be directing that anime at FanWorks. Oh, um, that'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> singer Masayoshi Oishi, who's performed theme <laughs> songs for a great number of anime, including Monthly Girls Nozaki Kun, Overlord. Uh, SSSS Gridman and others reveal on a Twitter account this week that he's in the process of creating and producing an anime. That's all we know. Hmm. Um, although there is a uh, key visual. Uh, YouTube anime production and distribution company Plot announced the winner of its first new generation YouTube manga award this week. And the winning submission will receive a one-shot YouTube anime adaptation. Um, hmm. The winner will also get a 1 million yen cash prize. Uh, it's about 9,500 US dollars, along with some goods. Uh, the winning submission from Keita Uehara is called Anti-Hero Generations. Voice actresses Megumi Haas and Maria Ise, who starred together in 2011's Hunter Cross Hunter, both made cryptic posts, cryptic posts this week, saying they were recording for a certain project. Just saying. Um... A... Are you super saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 86 year old TV and voice actor Shuichiro Moriyama passed away this week due to pneumonia. He was the voice uh, of the main character in Poco Rosso, uh, as well as a number of other uh, anime works. Um, manga artist duo Peach Pit is creating a new short story in the Shugo Chara franchise that they created. Hmm. Um, this sounds like it will be, uh, and it will be a manga in Kodansha's Nakayoshi magazine, uh, celebrating the duo's 20th anniversary. Um, oh, Rose and Maiden. Oh, yeah, Dear S. Um, <laughs> yes, they created uh, Rose and Maiden and Dear S, um, as well as Sugar Um This week brings some good news to anime music fans. A number of soundtracks from prolific composer Hiroyuki Sawano are now available digitally. Uh, he worked on Kill Kill, Kill, Al Noah Zero, Blue Exorcist, Seven Deadly Sins, and Promare, among others. Uh, finally, this year would have been the 99th anniversary of Gegege no Kitaro creator Shigeru Mizuki uh, and his uh, hometown of Sakai. Sakai Minato City, pardon me, in Totori Prefecture is yet again holding a special event to celebrate his birthday, as they have every year, featuring voice actors and musical guests from the franchise, plus big announcements for the future. Uh, oh, that's fun. Absolutely. I mean, that just oh, sounds fun. like, you know, yeah. good big old celebration of, uh, of a, a wonderful, f- wonderful, fun franchise, yeah. Which I, I enjoyed the the reboot that they did of uh, Kitaro. Yeah. Gosh, what is it? It's been like two years ago yeah, now, and it's yeah. still running. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I, think I got it... somewhere into like the 30 episodes, maybe 40 episodes, and I'm like, I got, I'm i going to have to put that to the side for a minute here and move <laughs> on some other stuff. Yeah. I swear I saw yeah. an yeah. 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 I swear I saw an article or something announcement that said singer for Cruel Angel's thesis? Mm. So, I don't know who it was, mm-hmm. but it passed away. It was somebody who was older oh. as well, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I don't, I don't know who sang it in what version. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Was it a singer for a Cruel Angel Thesis from a movie, or was it from the TV shows, right. or what? Yeah. But I, I saw that announcement, Weird. and I thought to make a <laughs> make a note of it, and I didn't like usual. Yeah. <laughs> for what it's worth, the new Kitaro anime has ended. Um, oh. Ended on in March of 2020 at episode 97. I got a lot of work. I got a lot to watch. <laughs> so much to watch. I, I thought the exact same thing. I was like, is that still going? My gosh. Like, they, yeah. I, last I checked. Um, well, as far as cool angel thesis goes, here in Baltimore, once COVID is, like, everyone gets their vaccines and COVID is lifted, pretty much you will have a 50 50% chance of any sushi joint here in the city. Mm. You're going to hear that song. Well, angel thesis. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's very disconcerting when you're, when you're eating your sushi and you hear that coming on and you're just like, Oh god. Gendo. Well I told you guys Where's before Gendo? went to uh, went to Raleigh, went to their Natsu Matsuri, their summer festival there on the, the North Carolina State Fairgrounds. Mm. And you know, there's all they have a whole festival stage, it's in a big warehouse kind of thing, getting food, doing stuff, coming back to sit down and eat, and they just have a live choir and a woman mm. singing <laughs> Cruel wow. Angel's thesis right there. And I'm like trying not to fall over, going ah, 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 running back to my friends. I'm like, Oh my god, this is so cool. Um it is very odd seeing footage of the 
I think the Japanese Navy marching band playing Cruel's Angels thesis on parade. Oh, that's awesome. Just you chose that one. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Like, well, the, it's, they, it's they do ta- Yamato, which makes sense. But... Yeah. But, you know, I like well, to well, see Towson... nerds, and nerds in uniforms. That works for me. <laughs> well, well, Towson, uh, Towson University here in, here in uh, Maryland. Mm. Their marching band uh, actually played tank at the Macy's Day Parade a few years ago oh, cool. as they were marching down. Yeah, nice musical nerds. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite online things was seeing a. Uh, I think I think it was on IRC a long time ago. I just saw a, a, a reference to it. IRC. Uh, Does yeah. anybody know what that is? Yeah, <laughs> chat. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's an old chat uh, thing. Um, uh, saying, um, um, oh gosh. Um, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Um, somebody is singing an anime theme song on um, America's Got Talent. They're actually singing an anime theme song on America's Got Talent. What is it? They're singing the end theme to Evangelion. Oh my god. Folks are like, um, that's a jazz standard. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fly Me to the Moon has, is long before <laughs> Evangelion. <you know. laughs> god. Oh, oh. oh, goodness. <laughs> Yeah. I, oh, there's a lot of classic singers who have done "Fly Me to the Moon" and are rolling in their graves right now. <laughs> like, hey. Oh, wow. My send up of that was much better than this anime. <laughs> Fly me to the moon. Um, cool. Um, yeah, that's the all the anime that fits all the news that fits this week. <laughs>